So, Ty, uh, all right, uh, uh, obviously we, we have a whole conversation planned here, but I want to give you a chance to respond to this new development. Fox News host Pete Hegseth named as Trump's choice for defense secretary. Does, does that surprise you? Oh, yes, of course it surprised me. Um, um, I don't know uh, Mr. Hegseth well, and uh, I, I do know that he's a veteran with a distinguished service record and obviously deserves uh, our thanks for that. But uh, but I think we're seeing, you know, a, a cr not across the board. You, you've got some you've got some excellent uh, and capable people like Marco Rubio, yeah. who's well qualified to be secretary of state. And yes, he's conservative. Yes, he's a Republican, but elections have consequences. But I think in some of these lower down, uh, well, that, that's not really lower down. It doesn't get much higher than secretary of defense, I guess. But in some of these subsequent uh, uh, nominations, I think we're seeing a lot of Bronnie James's and not many Steph Curry's. Uh, and, I, you know, we're obviously Homeland Security, Christy Noem, but um, so in the context here of, of what's at stake, and you talk about elections having consequences, this is what the American people voted for to give Trump the ability to do this, and he is doing it. Uh, the former vice president, Mike Pence, spoke out today publicly, and he was more direct than he usually is. Ty, as you know, he doesn't, he often chooses not to be, but now he is. He specifically said that he doesn't, urging Trump to not pardon January 6th rioters. Obviously, some of whom, of course, threatened to hang Mike Pence. He told the dispatch, and I quote, I don't think the president should pardon anyone who assaulted a police officer at the United States Capitol on January 6th. Now, um, obviously, as I said, you know, the, the chance among some of those rioters were hang Mike, Mike Pence. So what do you think? Trump has said he's going to pardon most or almost all of the January 6th rioters. He's called them hostages. He's posted free the January 6th hostages on social media. What do you think he'll do? Well, I don't think anybody in our history has, uh, you know, more tarnished the rule of law uh, than Donald Trump. And I don't think, um, I don't think it restrains him at all, uh, the concept that he might do that again. Um, I think it's highly possible that he will uh, go forward with these pardons. I would join the choir with uh, the former vice president, who I respect and uh, know to be a man of uh, great character and who loves his country. Uh, I think this would be a, tr a tragic uh, event, uh, further, further uh, uh, demeaning the rule of law to uh, those of us in this country. And, 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 and it's not going to go unseen around the world. I mean, this... This, this is the type of conduct that, when viewed internationally, uh, makes it impossible to distinguish the United States from, uh, you know, from a third world country or a, you know, uh, a South American dictatorship. Uh, this, is, this is really uh, lawlessness of, a high, of the highest order, and uh, there's no principled basis for it. Um, I, I, th I think it would be, be a very sad event. So, uh, uh, Ty... All right, let me just ask you about the New York uh, hush money case. I know that there's a, a sure. big development there. Uh, Judge Juan Marchand just announced he is delaying Trump's sentencing. And he hasn't decided whether he's going to wipe the conviction away altogether, obviously. He, he, uh, you know, he, he, he's got the Supreme Court's immunity ruling, a decision on that. Uh, but you say that the New York governor, Kathy Hochul, Democrat, obviously, could make a big play here. What is it? Well, she could pardon him. Um, you know, I think uh, uh, I think Judge Mershon and, uh, you know, postponing this, asking for guidance from the prosecution as to, you know, how best to proceed, uh, if at all, um, you know, kicks the can down the road in a way that uh, doesn't eliminate uh, the ability of the Trump team to appeal these convictions and uh, and and try to uh, create the perception that there was no legitimacy to the prosecution, even though they, they do have an argument based on that under, under the law. Mm -hmm. But she could take that, she could take that all away from uh, uh, the, the newly elected president uh, by pardoning him. Uh, if, she, if she pardons him, you know, there'll be no appeal. There'll be no court of appeals to overturn any opinion. They, mm -hmm. The convictions will be there in history forever uh, with an asterisk saying that he was pardoned. Uh, so can I ask you one quick thing before we go? You know, sure. back in the, the last election, it was lock her up, and then he did not obviously pursue that with Hillary Clinton. This time, though, uh, you know, he said his critics should be arrested for treason. He said it countless times. Jim Jordan, Judiciary Chair, is saying he's not going to do that. Uh, but obviously, he singled out President Biden, Liz Cheney, former President Obama, Adam Schiff, the entire January 6th committee, uh, as, as, as people who've engaged in treason. So do you think that Trump will actually target them legally? 
So I, I actually do not. On the other hand, uh, you know, this uh, warrior board is sounds like targeting um, uh, and it sounds, uh, you know, very uh, um, menacing to me. And now, I mean, and it also seems totally irrelevant because Trump already has the power to fire any general he wants. Uh, right. Keep in mind, Obama fired Stanley McChrystal, you know, uh, famously uh, Truman fired MacArthur. Uh, so, so this is a, this is, you know, a a process in search of a problem. Uh, it's 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 not necessary. Um, Trump has the power already to do it if he wants to, uh, and I think this is ha, ha, this would have a very chilling effect uh, within the military and further politicize a military where you know one of the one of the most important things we've we've avoided is. Uh, is having a, a politicized military that yeah. and a military that's been under civilian rule. All right. Well, Ty Cobb, thank you very much. Donald Trump's latest pick to join his cabinet sending shockwaves through Washington. The president-elect announcing Tuesday night he plans to choose Pete Hegseth as his secretary of defense. Hegseth is an Army veteran, Fox News host, who's been an outspoken defender of the returning president and a critic of current military policies. I'm straight up just saying we should not have women in combat roles. It uh, hasn't made us more effective, hasn't made us more lethal, has made fighting more complicated. We've all served with women and they're great. Mm -hmm. um, it just, our institutions don't have to incentivize that in places where traditionally, not traditionally, over human history, uh, men in those positions are, are more capable. Republican senators responding with a mix of surprise, not necessarily coming out outwardly against the choice. You be the judge. Wow, said Republican Senator Lisa Murkowski of Alaska. North Carolina Senator Tom Tillis simply saying, interesting. West Virginia Senator Shelley Moore Capito said, I trust the president to make a good choice. Indiana Senator Todd Young added, quote, I just don't know much about his background and vision. Hegseth's selection comes as we learn also about a new draft executive order that could lead to a purge of generals from the military ranks. The Wall Street Journal reporting the order would, quote, uh, establish a, quote, warrior board, end quote, and could, quote, fast track the removal of generals and admirable admirals found to be lacking in requisite leadership qualities. Democrats on Capitol Hill say the draft orders and the choice show Trump's true plans for a second term. I'm shocked, truly, and this is exactly what uh, we worried about and we warned about Donald Trump, which is that he is going to appoint unqualified loyalists to shape this government into his own personal fiefdom. All right, joining us now to discuss all of this, Sabrina Rodriguez, national political reporter for The Washington Post. Sabrina, good morning to you. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, good morning. Uh, so this pick, uh, not one that had been widely discussed uh, before Trump announced it yesterday, you could see there a selection of the senators that will need uh, to confirm him. And, uh, you know, we, we expect... Uh, we haven't called the, the final race here at CNN yet in the Senate. We expect them to have a 53-seat majority in the Senate, which means that Donald Trump would only be able to lose that many to confirm a cabinet post. Some of the things that uh, Hegseth has said, and we played there about particularly women in the military, uh, potentially problematic for him. What are you hearing uh, about how this pick came to be and what the reaction is going to be here? I mean, I think some of the reaction, I think the wow summed it up for, I think, for a lot of people in Washington today. I think, you know, senators are going to be navigating, though, the pressure of having Donald Trump in the White House again. This is just the first of many challenges they're going to face. And I think, you know, their sort of measured response and reaction is sort of a lot of what we're going to see. The, the reality is, again, he needs the numbers for this confirmation. I think there's going to be an aggressive push to sell him as someone who can, be, you know, who can be defense secretary, there's already talk of, you know, oh, him being very decorated from his past and, you know, certain credentials that he has. But um, the reality is that this is just one of many picks. Donald Trump, in just a matter of a week, has moved very quickly to, you know, flood us with the many people that he's going to be nominating for secretary positions. And I think senators are going to be in a position of really having to navigate who exactly is it that they want to push against and who exactly are they excited and, and going to be full-throated supporting. 